Okay, we're back in Lightroom and we've just finished importing the pictures from our previous photo shoot, which you saw in the last session. Um, we imported them into a folder, so if we go into the folder section on the left hand side here in the library module and scroll down, we, we're in the folder called New PW Promo Shots, which is the folder that was created as part of importing these files. And we can see on the right hand side here, this is the grid view, which we can access using the grid view button here at the bottom, um, or by pressing the G key. And we can see that we've imported 16 pictures. Now, just before I go on and show you some of the other uh, features here in the library module, I just want to also show you something that I personally find very useful. In the left hand sidebar and also in the right hand sidebar, um, which you can push in and out by clicking these little arrows at the sides here. If you right click on one of the modules in here, there's this tick box called solo mode, which is extremely useful because what it does is, let me just get rid of that top bar and the bottom bar, that was the other way around. Um, the, uh, the solo mode, what it does is, it means that you can have one of these open at any one time. So if I click on library, um, just the library's open and the folders have closed. If I click on find, just the find opens and libraries closed and so on and so forth so folders and then if I scroll down collections and it's just the bit that I've clicked on that opens up which with this big long list of things that you can have in these sidebars I find that really helps me concentrate on what it is I'm doing and of course you can turn that off again if you want to by just unticking solo mode but personally I find that extremely useful so um, in our folders mode here we've got um, our new PW promo shots and the next thing to do is to start going through these pictures and deciding which of these it is that we want to use. So let's bring up the um, film strip here at the bottom and um, we're going to use that for navigating around quite a bit. So um, first thing to say is with the grid view open if we press the left and right cursor keys or if we just click on the film strip here with the mouse we can see that that is also selecting up here in the top view um, and another very useful thing that you can do if you click on one and shift click on another one you can highlight a whole bunch or if you control click you can individually select certain pictures. Now on the, on the Macintosh that would be um, shift click for the selecting groups and it would be command click I guess. Uh, I'm no Mac user but I'm guessing it's command click um, to select individual ones like that. So um, very useful to be able to do that when you're coming to some of the other view modes here. But for the time being let's just go in and zoom in on a particular one. So the next view along is the loop view which you can get to by pressing the E key. So if I click on an image and then press E you can see that zoomed us up so we're looking at just this one image. Now um, another feature of the loop view which is very very useful if you just click once on the image it zooms you right into a hundred percent view and as you can see for a moment there it just took a second to load but now that it's loaded we're now looking at this as a full one-to-one -one, uh, one pixel on screen is one pixel in the original photograph uh, view so we've view zoomed right the way in and it's very easy to see on this particular image that this particular shot is not in focus so this is not a very usable shot so I'm going to zoom back out and what I'm going to do is I'm going going to mark that picture as a reject. Now we've got two flags at the bottom of the image here. We've got a flag as pick and flag as reject. And you can get those by also pressing P on the keyboard for pick and X on the keyboard for reject. So in this case I'll click the X flag which is the reject flag and we can move on to the next image by clicking it on the film strip. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to zoom in and say okay how how in focus is that? Well it's it's in better focus than the last one but it, I still don't like it. It's way too bright so I'm going to mark that as a reject as well. Now there's a much quicker way of going through and, and doing these. We can Obviously we can go to the grid view by pressing G or clicking the grid view button there and I could select a bunch of those. So let's, if I select those first five I can then press the, uh, uh, the reject flag, um, I had to press it twice because the first two are marked as reject, so pressing the reject flag unflagged it, um, so pressing it again a second time reflagged all five of them as rejects, um, and uh, there's an another really useful view, it looks to me just from the grid view here, like these last seven images here are the most usable ones. So let's go to another view here, the survey view, which is accessible by the N key and that gives us all seven images all next to each other. Now you might want to just give yourself a little bit more screen space when you're doing this. Um, 
because obviously the intention of this view is to allow you to compare similar images um, and that's going to be particularly useful for say portrait sessions or family shots or maybe wedding shots and you're trying to get a whole bunch of people together in a picture finding out who's got their eyes closed who's smiling nicely who's looking away from the camera that sort of thing so um, in this case I'm looking at these last few pictures here and I'm thinking these last four there's probably a little bit too much um, brightness up in the top left corner of the image so by clicking this X button in the corner of the image I can take pictures out of the selection so that's taken the last four out and I'm left right now with three images and looking at these it's a little bit hard to judge between them maybe that last one's also a little bit too much in the top corner as well so let's just get rid of that one and we're down now to two images so let's bring back our um, uh, uh, our film strip at the bottom and let's try the comparison view so I've got two images selected and if I go into the compare view it's going to take them so we've got a select and a candidate here and these are represented by the black diamond above the image in the film strip view and the white diamond above the image in the film strip view now just as an uh, example let's just select uh, I'm going to select multiples here. So I've clicked on one and shift clicked it on another. And if I click with my mouse on the film strip, that's going to change which one is pointed to by the black diamond. So that'll be clicking changes the one on the left. So you see the black diamond moves wherever I click, and the one on the left is changing. And if I use the cursor keys, that's going to change the white diamond, and that's going to change the one on the right. So it's white diamond on the right, which is the candidate, and black diamond on the left which is the select so that's a useful way of going through a series of images um, and comparing them side by side but the other nice thing about the, the comparison view is that you can use it like the loop view so if you've got like we have here images that are extremely similar um, but you want to compare the real details and say okay well which of these has got a better focus or finer, finer uh, uh, contrast or something like that then you can do that by zooming in and using the loop view like you do in the loop view and uh, comparing them side by side so now I've already decided because um, I've let's just select those seven like we had before in the in the uh, survey view um, already decided that the last four at least were not all that good so let's just go back and select just the first three um, and just compare these side by side so I'm going to start with with on the left the first one and on the right the second one so and then use the cursor keys to compare those two on the right to the one on the left th th those two now we've got the left the left one and the middle one selected those look pretty good the one on the right I think you'll see it's not quite so contrasty so we can take that one out of our selection and just go back to our left and our right and I think looking at those two they're both nice and sharp they've both got good color um, we've looked at it larger and I like the shape of the lights in reflected in the front of the lens there uh, on both shots they're both usable shots I think just zooming in probably the one on the left just has the edge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay um, going back to my grid view we can still see which ones we've got selected here those are all useful images so I'm going to with them all selected I'm going to press P on the keyboard to mark them as picks and then all these others just clicking control clicking on the individual images here I'm going to mark those all as rejects I'm going to press X to get them all marked as rejects and you can see the flags here in the grid view um, so the next thing to do is to delete those images that we don't want now I've mentioned many times in the past that it's important to go through and delete images that you're not going to use. Um, with digital the images uh, are free in theory but they take up so much disk space particularly if you're shooting in RAW. So um, Lightroom has got this very useful feature in it now that you can go into photo menu oops, the photo menu and click delete rejected photos and all those images that have got a black um, reject flag next to them if you click the delete key the delete button in this confirmation dialog box um, that's going to actually delete them from the disk there was also a remove button which will take them out of Lightroom but it's going to leave them on your disk and that's not really what I want the point here is to throw away and forget about the ones that we're never ever going to use so I'm selective about what I want I'm going to bring back that left hand bar there and the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm preparing these images for use my next step would be to keyword them so let's go into our keyword tag 
uh, into our keyword section on the left here. Um, and we can see, remember when we imported them, we actually typed two keywords in. We typed in promo and we typed in lens. And you can see in the bottom corner of the image here in the grid view, we've got a little tag. That shows that it's already been tagged with something. So we've already got some keywords on these three images. And um, if we go into, let's look at the, oops, let's go back and select those three images again. Uh, new PW promo shots. I clicked on a keyword tag there, which took me to, to a view showing me all the images that had that keyword. So with these three images selected, so I click on the first one, shift click on the last one, you can see we've now got a minus next to a couple of these sections in the keyword tags. Now the keyword tag section runs uh, a lot like um, a folder system on your computer. You've got folders and you've got items within folders and folders within folders. So in just that same way, MISC here is a folder, which if I open it up by clicking the little arrow, shows me all the items underneath it. And some of these are keywords and some of these are folders as well. So ins inside Animal I have Swan. Um, and you can see here we've got a tick next to Lens which shows that all these images I've got selected have got the Lens keyword attached already. If I go into the right hand sidebar and the keywording section in the right here we can see exactly what keywords we've got. So we've got Lens and Promo already. And it's got a few suggested keywords that we've used recently here just below it. So if I wanted to quickly tag that with Macro I can just click the word macro and it's added macro to that. But I'm going to work on the left here. Um, it's also just quickly looking shot type so you can see that we've got macros now ticked and promo is already ticked. And the reason these two keywords, the lens and promo, are nicely filed away in these folders here is because when I typed them into that import dialog I'd already got these keywords in my keyword um, library so when I typed in promo into that importer it knew that I meant the promo that I'd got in the shop types folder so if I hadn't um, got those keywords in already they would appear here at the bottom as their own item that wasn't in any other folder um, so let's let's add another keyword ourselves um, let's go for studio lighting so let's go for um, let's put that in shot types so under shot types oh I've done it again I've clicked on shot types um, let's go back up to folders and down to new PW promos and then back to keyword tags and then under shot types instead of left clicking which is not what I meant to do I'll right click and I'm going to choose um, create keyword tag as child of this keyword tag. So if I click that, it's going to bring up the keyword tag dialog. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new keyword called Studio Lighting. And then we have this option for synonyms here. And what synonyms are, are other keywords that you would always like to be included whenever you're using this keyword. So I might, for synonyms here, choose Lighting or Studio. And you can just add more synonyms by separating them with commas. And then we've got a few tick boxes down here. So first of all, create as child of shot types. Well, yes, I, I want this tag to be, uh, this keyword tag to be a child of the shot types keyword tag. Um, do I want to include this tag in selected photos, uh, sorry, include the selecting photos uh, in this tag? So yes, I do. I, I want to apply this keyword tag to all the photos we've got selected. Um, include on export. That's going to include the keywords in the EXIF data of any images that we export from Lightroom. So if you export as a, a PSD or as a TIFF or a JPEG, you can include your EXIF data in those files and it will include these keywords as part of that EXIF data. Um, when we do that export, do we want to export the parent keywords? Now, Normally, if you've got a deep tree, so for example, if you've got like a location tree, and you might start off and say, okay, uh, the UK, and then in the UK is the county of Cheshire, and in the county of Cheshire is the town of Sandbach, and I took this photo in Sandbach. So you might want to tag your photo with Sandbach, if you took it in Sandbach, and have um, the export parents uh, tick box turned on for Sandbach, and that will automatically include Cheshire. And if Cheshire's got that export parents ticked on, that will include the UK, and then probably you don't want to include the export parents in the UK because above that might be location. And location is not a very useful keyword. So just by adding the Sandbatch tag, you can include Sandbatch, Cheshire and UK, all of which are useful keywords for that image, just by including that one keyword tag. So that's what the export parents are for. In this case, I don't want to export the word shot types as, as part of my uh, keyword information for this. Um, but I do want to export synonyms, which is what this last tick box is for. So lighting and studio will be included as keywords whenever I include studio lighting. 
So if I create that, that's created that shot types um, studio lighting tag down here, and it's tagged all three images with it. So that's keywording. Let's move on now to making a collection. Uh, so with these three images, now uh, if I just click off them, you can see they're unselected now. Once again, I'm just selecting all three. Click on the first one, shift click on the last one, and I'm going to go into collections here. Now I might already have, no I haven't, okay good, I deleted it before I started recording. Um, I'm going to make a collection called uh, Tutorial 13, which is what we're on. And the way I do that is having all three selected like I showed you, just press the plus button next to collections and I'm going to type Tutorial 13 and we've got a tick box here to say include the selected photos. So that's what I want to do, I want to include those photos that we've got selected. And we've now got a collection here called Tutorial, oh, <laughs> I mistyped, let's rename that, I include the three, so it now says Tutorial 13, uh, all I did there was I right clicked on the name and choose Rename, um, so we've now got a collection called Tutorial 13, and the important thing about collections is that they are completely free format, um, then you can create uh, tree structures, as you can see here, I've got quite a lot of collections already, and under Photo Walkthrough, um, this works just like file systems. Again, you can have folders in, within folders. You can have items within folders. And inside Photo Walkthrough, I've got headshots, promo shots, tutorial photos, and so on. Um, so if we wanted to, we could have um, uh, the Tutorial 13 folder I've just created as part of Photo Walkthrough. And I can just drag and drop that onto the Photo Walkthrough there. And you can see it's, it's moved it into the Photo Walkthrough folder. So um, the important thing about these uh, collections is that you are using collections to represent sets of related photographs. Um, they may not necessarily come from the same shoot, they may not come from the same day, they may not even come from the same camera, um, but what you do is you can you can make collections from all sorts of different places, and you can see I've got some of my artistic stuff there, I've got some events in there, uh, and they might come from all different places. So this is my nephew James, and this is, um, actually in this case it's from two different shoots I think, um, and they're all collected together in one collection. So that's useful when you want to come later on and produce slideshows or if you want to print off sets of images. Um, and you can, of course, uh, add and remove things from the collection simply by clicking on them and choosing Remove from Collection. Or if you've got uh, uh, images selected that are not in the collection, you can add them to a collection by dragging and dropping them onto the collections and all sorts of things. So having chosen the... Um, images that we want to work with. We've got three possibles here. Um, I didn't mention yet that we can score these as well as choosing them as picks or rejects. So um, if you mouse over one of these images in the in the, um, in the the grid view here, we can see there's four, five little dots and this is just like iTunes and it's just like uh, Bridge. You can click to say how many stars you want it to have. We've got the same thing here just at the bottom of this window and we can also um, just press the number key on the keyboard. So if I press 1, that'll set the rating to 1. If I press 2, it'll be 2, and so on. Um, we've also got, just like in Bridge, we've got the ability to label things with colours. Uh, in this case, red, yellow, green, uh, blue, and purple. And those are buttons 6 to 9. We can't actually label something as purple with the keyboard. We would have to click that. But um, you can label things with only one colour, just as you can enable things with only one score, uh, and you can do that by pressing the 6 key or the 7 key and so on. And now that's a really useful feature if you're, for example, doing different styles of shots within a session. So maybe you go out for a walk uh, and you might go around a town taking lots and lots of photos and you come to somewhere that's got a big panorama and so you want to do a stitch panorama. Uh, later on, you, when you come back and import them into Lightroom, it's really useful to be able to go through the images and see which ones needed to be stitched together. And what you might do is you say, okay, well, these two images here are part of a panorama, so I'll label those with, in red, and it makes them stand out from the rest of the pictures you took that day, so you can see which ones need to be worked on as a group. So that's a really useful feature. Uh, in this case, I don't want to do that. Um, in this case, what I want to do is I want to say that first image there, that's the one I want to work on. That's that's a five-star image. These two here, that one was probably a four-star image, and that one was probably only a three-star image. I'm just keeping those other two around in case it turns out that there's something wrong I don't like about that first image. So um, I, I like to keep you know the one that I want to work on and a couple of the almost made it's around just uh, in case there's something about those images that uh, are in some respect better.
Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.